told everybody exactly what was going to happen. weekend when, when it was coming into the weekend i was like oh, tough because it had about 800 bucks to pull up pull up where inside the bottom side of the 68.3 laplace on that weekly current candle and the 95.4 percent distribution all right remember we were down here at 29 right around 29 and um we needed to get up above i'm pretty sure it was 29.8 and we all know where uh, we we closed the week, right? It was up there a little higher than that. Yeah, it was right around 30. But now immediately, look what we're doing. I mean, first day, for the first day of this new weekly candle, we already ran the entire weekly 68.3 Laplace. The candles, you know, the previous two are closing inside this 95.4 Laplace distribution. I feel good about that. And here's what I even feel better about. Right? What do returns do? They mean revert. Yeah, for sure, Sayron. Any questions? Any subject? I'm definitely well versed in trading and cannabis. <laughs> that is for sure. I literally used to make oil and give it to cancer patients. Bladder bladder cured several people. The cannabis oil, not me. I was just having fun making it and not selling it, giving it to them. Which is important in my opinion. Let's see. But yeah, the returns are going to mean revert at some point here, right? On this weekly chart. Now, say say the returns mean revert this week. Guys, we, we would never, ne I mean, we're talking... We'll never see a pump like that. Ridiculous. Because look at look look where it's at. 57, 58K. That'd be awesome. Have a 25K week. <clears throat> That'd be fun as shit. But I'm thinking we're, we're going to start another up move. Right? That's kind of what I'm feeling. It's down, Is it down here dicking around in these low levels right now? Yeah, it is. It's definitely been ranging. But I'm thinking over the next couple months, we're going to mean revert. This thing, we're going to see, it's going to test how perfect would this be, right? Right now, there's a 68.3% chance, right? The bottom side of the 68.3 gets tested. It'd be great if it, what, what if it, we just went sideways, slow, slow, boop, go up here, maybe hit 41 again, reevaluate. But this is one thing that I've come to understand. And not and here's why. Let me see here. So I'll go over here. You know, you throw it on in one minute and you watch it. And it is <laughs> Brings a smile to my face when you start to really understand this. That the returns are going to mean revert. You've got the deviation bands. And obviously, we don't even need to... Uh, we'll have another little <coughs> RMLR stream. Because it's fun, right? But when you understand... Once you get to some of these lower deviation bands and you're and the returns are away from the mean like that, the returns are gonna mean revert. Right? You watch this on the one minute. Okay, don't be turning moves right so you're not there. Uh yeah, for sure. Like this move right here, maybe? On the minute. So, I mean, just say this is any time frame, but just this chart. Yeah, for sure. That's what this is allowing. This this thing is really gonna help. 
right? This thing is really going to help. But uh, I'm, I'm loving using entropy, right? I'm loving using entropy to figure out when, when, to, in, when to enter, when to exit, right? It's pretty powerful. But so I think is what you're saying. So as entropy, let me see. Okay, yeah, you are talking about entropy. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I feel more comfortable taking the trend, taking the entropy trend. This is the exit. Yeah, this is, this is how I'm playing the exit. And then I'm waiting for trend again, right? And this is only a minute chart for crying out loud. But if, if you're scalping this one minute, I mean, there's two nice little moves here. $100 pop, right? That's what we were talking about the other day. You could sit down here on this one minute and take $100 trades all day long using this. For sure. And always keep it in the back of your head, right? What's the most important thing? You're going to limit your losses. If you are presented with one. You're just going to get out of the trade. Yep, hundred. Yep, for sure, Sayron. Full account. Yep. It is actually the mean of returns. It's the reverse. It's the re, It's actually the reverse mean of log returns, and that's that's what that's why the syndicator is so powerful. Is that it's the reverse function. And, th and this is what he is what we realized, and this is the mind blower. No, but we will have this indicator. This indicator will come out to you guys. Um, you're not gonna have if you're having a variance outlier, say, Ron, it's trending for sure, for sure. Right here was the last one. Right, we got the little trend. Boom! There's the outlier, right there. Go back here. There was the outlier to the downside. Yep, for sure. If there's a variance outlier, you can guarantee entropy's trending. But yeah, if it if it uh if it were to happen, it, it just it just doesn't make sense. Right, because if you're having an outlier on the variance, it's a strong move. Yeah, for sure. There's a bunch. There is a bunch. I mean, literally, is what I want to get this thing down to is where I'm uh, I'm using the variance with the two different entropy indicators and the reverse mean of log returns. Because this thing is so powerful when you understand how to use it. When you finally understand, okay, the returns are going to mean revert. Price action is going to follow. Entropy stops trending. You're out of the trade. Especially if you're getting wicks almost down to the 3 SD band. You're definitely below the 95.4. So think about this. Crosses the mean. Entropy starts trending. You're in the freaking trade, right? As soon as entropy starts to go back in to randomness, as soon as it starts to go back into randomness, you're out of the trade, right? And it gives you great exits, great entries. And then what's going to happen? So if you're down here at the 95.4% ban, and the mean's way up here, this baby's going to mean revert, right? You're way out there. You're way out there. You get out of the 95.4% range, this, they're, they are going to want to revert. And then, then you start to realize that past price action predicts <laughs> the mean of returns. We would have never found this unless this reverse function came to be. Yeah, it's fun. Van, man. Because if you, like if I turn on the dev here. If I turn on the deviation bands that has the Gaussian mean, you can see the difference. Here, I'll even. 
Let's see here, style. Where is... Doo -doo -doo -doo. Right. Where in the hell is just a mean? Boom, boom, boom. Anyway, I just wanted you to see it better. It's, you know, the skinny white line. Right there. Right? That's the Gaussian mean. Just booking around. And you put the reverse function on the... On the uh, log return mean. It's, it's so much more powerful. Incredible. Because it's actually, because when, when it's just the Gaussian mean, like with the deviation bands, you're, you do not, you never are very far away from the mean. I mean, it will go away from it, but this, this is powerful, especially with the deviation bands. I'm still working with it. And obviously, I'm not even actively trading. I was running a chainsaw for seven hours a day. That was lovely. I am worked. <laughs> Chainsaw kick my butt. So yeah, that's what's powerful. So the past price action predicts the future mean of returns. Yeah. Yeah. Where, oh, where? Gaussian. Yeah, the Gaussian filter. But there's, play with it. That's what's awesome. And if you do play with it, bounce around with, with the mean, the geometric mean, Gaussian filter, the harmonic mean. Those are the ones I like to play with. All the other stuff, you know, Donnie threw it in there. You can mess around with the Fisher. Lee squares. There's a, you got the root mean square. There's a lot of cool things in here. Variance log, moving average. <clears throat> yep. But this is a game changer. This will be fun. Yeah, but boom, on the one minute. And I just love watching the one minute because it did just you can see everything happening, right? You can see the divergences playing out. I mean, there's bare div right now. Does it play out? Does the, ret does the returns oscillator bounce here? You look over here on the price action. Okay, we're a little bit above the mean. We could just hover around right here, right? Maybe uh, reject off the one SV band here. Take this to the downside on the one minute because of the bare div. But the returns oscillator could bounce right here. We'll see. Fun to watch, though. Mm, what I did see. Got on the four hour. Yeah, I mean, just look at the four hour price action. I mean, we're just chopping around. All right, we get this little run here. The reverse uh, wave trend crossed up the reverse fissure immediately. What happens? Boom! Man, big four-hour dump candle. I've had a lot of them. See what's happening here. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is distribution all day. Wow. But like I said, you know, I go up there on the weekly and I'm like, you know, at some point... The returns are going to mean revert. We're way, we're f way far away. Big time. Way far away. But, but it, you know, look right here, right? We're just flying. Yeah, finally. Get below it, go up, mean revert. Rides the mean. Right now we're dropping away. At some point, the returns will mean revert. Price action is going to... Follow, but where? Where does that happen? Do we just go sideways? Do we stay down here around 30k? I mean, for the rest of the year, get some excitement. <clears throat> I mean, this is great for low time time frame trading, right? I'm ready for the market to take off as a whole, though. 
Big time. Hmm. This was interesting. This was interesting. Usually you're going to see a cord, uh, a coordinated dump, right? Man, you now you if you go and you correlate SPY and Bitcoin on the low time frames, you're going to see you're going to see it go negatively correlated, no doubt about it. No doubt about it. When uh, traditional markets opened up, right? SPY was up, well, almost 2%, yeah, 7.29 7 points. Bitcoin dumps going into the close of traditional markets. So you'll see, a, like on the four hour, guarantee they're not correlated. So this is interesting. NASDAQ was feeling some pain though, going into the end. So yeah, crazy, SPY pump today. Now I saw NASDAQ was up a little bit earlier. But yeah, this is, uh, I wouldn't be a bit surprised if Bitcoin's getting ready to rebound overnight, probably. Um, and this is what I was talking about, right? When we get these new ranges, I checked earlier, it's like 0.67%. Yep. So we got a tight weekly range. We're going to see some action. So what's this thing going to do? We already, literally to the dollar, what did we just do earlier? Look at the wick. Right to the first support level the weekly price action volatility range. And uh, after this dump, you know, the, the, the mean's going to follow, right? Well, at some point, you're going to mean reverse. Finally. Almost did here. This little pump. It came down. Boop. Then by using all your tools, you know, we're going to cross over. Going to go to the top side. But then that, that's the thing. It's a game. And when you realize this past price action is creating this future mean of returns, I mean, you can see it. And it follows it. Trust me. With this we know. Undoubtedly. Pretty nuts. So this price action starts pumping. You'll see, you know, out here, you'll, you'll see the mean of returns start to pump. Right? That's what makes it great. That's it's powerful. This thing flies up here. The mean is flying right behind it out here. And so when you go up here, you don't have you don't have to go as far to mean revert. Pretty crazy. I've just been watching it, how it creates it on the one minute. It's pretty powerful. But it would be nice to get uh <clears throat> let's take a peek over here. This is four hour telling me, right? Had a nice outlier on the four hour. Hmm. Yeah, when it comes to the four hour too, right? We're sitting, we're on top of the mean. So are we going to cross down and then mean revert up here? Are we going to pump off the mean? Find out. You will find out. Started to trend to the downside, but hit those uh, standard air bands. It was like, nope. Hmm. Hanging on to the reverse fissure on the 90 minute. And the first standard deviation band as well. Yeah. We're probably, although, I mean, it's starting, we're starting to print a little, we're not a little, we're starting to print some hidden bear. Fishers are turning up down here by the 3SD band, though. Past the two, anyway, about right in the middle. Oh, boy, the correlation on the 90 minute just fell off a cliff. Cliff. Hmm. Heading back into randomness. This volatility contracts here. This price action will walk up. Significantly negatively correlated. Look at the APPs. They're all pretty buried too. Hmm.
Just got this 90 minute, what, 25 minutes ago. Hmm. And bull div in the 45, 15 look like. Yeah, a bunch of, uh, yeah, a bunch of bull div. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this thing's probably going to pick up a little bit. Probably cross the mean here. Where is that? Yeah, it's the 95.4. Right at the R1 of the weekly. 31.5. Let me see here. Yeah, right around the 1 SD. A little bit below it. So the R1 on the weekly is right at pretty much a little bit under the first standard deviation on the weekly, the top side. This though, th th this is played out, in my opinion. I mean, we're taking some profits, man. There's some people, my goodness. I like it though. But this is what you wanna watch. We close a weekly candle below this 95.4. We'll we'll probably see see some lower numbers, but you can see what's happening. And this this is the same thing the previous two weeks, All right? Had these dumps below it, Whoop. closes right back up inside. That week, pulled back up inside the first standard deviation normal distribution. Last week, I pulled inside the 68.3 Laplace. What happens this week? Because we literally already ranged in the weekly 68.3 on the first day. Something here. Are those? Let me see something. Um, bam, it is that candle. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, man, there's just. That was the low on the returns oscillator. That big daily candle right there. After that. Obviously, going sideways. We did have this big wick, right? But I mean, you can see it. I mean, there's a lot of bull div hovering right around the zero mean. Hmm. The entropies are saying up too on the daily. What's going to happen here? I mean, are we going to go back into? I mean, we're going to continue to contract. It looks like the correlations. Trying to flip back to the downside. Oh yeah. Well it's weakening. That's for damn sure. Hmm. Yeah, I mean we literally we've been under the mean since 41. Yeah. Yep. Because it was the 48k, yeah. Hmm. Uh, on the daily, let me see. Oh yeah, down here, 
Yeah, but see, that's that's the thing. So, do we just, do we hover around under the mean? Do we dump out? Or do we cross up? Do we cross up the mean? As soon as, it, if this price action crosses up this mean, you're going to see this turn up. Just because the mean of returns is right down here, that doesn't mean price action is going there. By any means. But yet, <laughs> no pun intended. <laughs> um, it's down there. It's down there. I mean, price gets up. Maybe we have like a, what if this thing were to go to 40K real fast, 10K, and then come down here and mean anywhere. Oh, good Lord. Thing is, this the, the, the mean of returns will rise quickly with a pump. Once you guys get this, you'll you'll see how this thing's working. It's pretty powerful. Got my little pink my pink tail hanging out. <clears throat> but you can see slowly on this daily, just going back into randomness. Contracting, heading negatively correlated. Going into randomness, losing its correlation. Today anyway. Yeah, this thing's going to float up, I bet. I bet this thing's going to float up. Yeah, it's just now. With that 15-minute close, crossed over the mean. So this is definitely probably going to get up here to the top side of the 68.3 here real quick. 29.5, I would imagine. <coughs> and... You know, everybody knows how this is going to work. All right, we get up here, we start closing some 15-minute candles above the daily. I mean, we're going to get up here in the weekly again, close some up there. This is what happened yesterday, right? The weekly was inside the 68.3, so rejection, rejection, right? Bounce off, look, using that weekly range as support all over the place. Perfect wicks. And the daily snuck in there, too. So this this was a lot of nice, uh, eh, just... I don't want to say, I'll say intraday just because the daily's right there on that weekly. So that was, a, it was kicking price action back up for a while until that last dump. Man, that thing flushed out. Okay. Flushed out. A little fake out too. We close this 15 minute candle below it a little bit and get one back up to the top of the daily. Look at that wick right to the top of the daily and flush. This will be interesting to see now that, I mean, the candle, the candle did cross over. We are on the other side of the mean. Do we make a run up here to the weekly? Like a thousand, thousand dollars? Uh, let me go back over here. Variance is definitely low. Volatility is about, cru excuse me, about crushed. And going into randomness, losing its correlation to the downside. This could start a walk up. And yeah, there was definitely bull div on the return or on the uh, log return Z score too. Let's see. Oh yeah, bunch, bunch returns oscillator and the uh, log return Z score and uh, Fisher. And DLP. So, this thing's got all of the uh, writings of a little move. Probably nothing major. Probably nothing major. We'll see, though. Let's see if there's anything else happening. Ticka, ticka, ding. East. ETH's back under 2K. Shitcoin. Let's see. Oh, they're running this game. Triple Q's. Triple Q's and SPY were up today. I think NASDAQ was a little bit. Obviously, it's down right now. But, uh... I bet they didn't lose correlation. Let's look at SPY real quick on this VRE. Yeah, that was a good day. Got up, look. No, that's actually, I'll tell you what, man. This is a little more significant than the last week. I'm sure everybody 
remember I was talking about right here. It looked good, obviously, right? Spy dumped out. Spy dumped out. I liked it. Why? Well, it was above the weekly, right? Closing above the weekly, looking good, had some momentum. Woohoo! Here we are again. Closing, close of the day, above the weekly vol price action volatility range. Hmm. There we go. Um, did we get continuation tomorrow? Closed above the one SD too, and the monthly. The monthly S1. That's one thing good about SPY, man. It really it didn't drop too far below its monthly. We know Bitcoin, right? Look at Bitcoin. Bitcoin's monthly is way up. 40. 40.9 is the center. That's why I'm not going to be a bit surprised if we're, we don't run up 10K by the end of the month. This, this could be the week where this thing turns around. Something's not adding up. I, I got this feeling. My gut. My spidey senses are tingling. Something's weird. Something is very weird. It's not just the, all my JPEGs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is uh, kind of crazy how far below Bitcoin dropped from the monthly range. Mm. I didn't see that coming, really. But that's... <laughs> It's why, man. When you're trying to, when you're looking at the the macro stuff, <laughs> you got to, you got, you want to get down on the low time frames. That's where you want to trade. You, you start just these people that are just looking at the macro. And it's like they don't see the forest because of the trees. You know what I mean? I like to get in the forest. Freaking dick around down on those low time frames. That's where we know we're money. Because anything four hour and above, I mean, you're looking at swing trades. Where we don't do that. Knock yourself out if you want. Anybody who wants a swing trade volatility, go for it. Good luck. <laughs> Good luck. Or you trade this crazy volatility. In the 15 minute. God, look at all these great trades. <clears throat> yeah, little outliers. Let's look on the five minute. Yeah, lots of good moves today. You pull it all in. Oh, yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. About seventeen. About seventeen outliers in the five minute. Yeah. Most of them trended too. See, that's what's great. When you're having those outliers, you're going to trend. Um, let's see. Yeah, not as many, though. No, you can see them. They all did. Little trends. Some bigger than others, right? Nah, well, hell, I mean, that's over a full 24 hours, though. I'm just talking about, like, yesterday's trading day. Yeah, there was about 17 on the five-minute. So, just say you're trading eight hours. That maybe you got... Seven or eight of those or something. Who knows? I'm going to get as many as I can as I can get. If I'm trading, right? I'm begging. Come on. Yeah, volatility on the five minute just 
off a cliff on top of the mean. This thing's about to pop to the top side. Let's see. Yeah. Bunch of bull dip was building from way back here on the five minute. Every one of these lows is a higher low. Probably getting ready to pop. We're, we're above the mean of returns. We're over here. See on this five minute. That's the first step, right? We got to get above this reverse wave trend. Get up. Start cooking. Right there. That 29.5 area is right on the five minute reverse fissure. 68.3 on the daily. 29.5. Probably heading right there. And it's the center of the daily range. Would make sense to me. This is, I saw this earlier though. It's kind of ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, 80, Jesus. Just on Bitfinex, there's 85,700 Bitcoins longed. Only 2,646 shorted. <laughs> Little bit of an imbalance there. Little bit of an imbalance. Speaking of imbalances. Yeah, I think we've seen the uh, brunt of the selling. It's starting to lose its, de definitely starting to lose its uh, power. Want to see the buy pressure pick up for crying out loud though. Gee, many Christmas. Just look like on the weekly. Hey, many Christmas. Yeah, I mean, just on the weekly, you can see, right? All the way back, uh, yeah, May. Not a lot of buy pressure. I mean, we had a few little spurts here, right? Those couple little moves back up to the top side. Huh. A lot of sell pressure, though, continuous. Profit taking. Um, I just read your message. Yeah, but I'm telling you, there is not, there it definitely isn't. I mean, when you get a variance outlier, high probability you're dropping in the trend a little bit. You didn't on this one, but you're dropping though. You're, you definitely are drop, starting to drop. Wasn't as big of a move, right? But very tradable. Very tradable. Which one was that? That was this one of the top side, right? Let's see. Oh, Jesus. I mean, we're talking. Uh, we're talking $500 move. Anybody have any questions? Yeah. I mean, you can see. And look at that thing. All right. Another little session break, man. I think fucking just dumb. <clears throat> Very in the interesting. Dropped right. I mean, you freaking right before the break, man. You close up there below the weekly and just whoop. Playing that game. Yeah, I bet this rebounds. I bet that rebounds. Like I said, I mean, it's what Spy did last week. Let's see what happens. Tricky bastard. I mean, we're above. We close above the weekly. Closed above the 1SD and the monthly S1. Does this want to make a run at the monthly range? Possibly. 419, 420. Be a nice move. Um... I like I like it. It's got to start turning blue. So like that one move, it never did. I mean, it started to lighten up a little bit, but yeah. But yeah, if you want to just if you want to be safe, take these trending moves. You know they're going to be, and it's guarantee it. If if this is dropping into, so let's put it this way: if you see entropy dropping into a trend guarantee there's an outlier but you could have a small outlier without the entropy dropping into trend that is definitely true but if you should see entropy trending you can guarantee there's an outlier associated with it all these little trends 
Let's see. Yep, little outliers. Little outliers. Even that one. Uh, yep, there she is. Look at these little guys. Look, they're cute. They're little baby outliers. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, big time. It's like flopping the nuts, right? <laughs> Game's fucking easy. Yeah, volatility down there on the low time frames. What's it look like on the 15? Probably low. Yeah, dropping off a cliff a little bit, too. Yeah, we got a move coming. And so then, what, what's this going to do over here? Are we going to drop back down below, or are we going to use this, use this little ledge here? Whee! I'm going to pop off that bad boy? That'd be fun. That'd be fun. Cause yeah, we're almost we're we're cruising back to where we're about. We're very random. I like this uh, percentile contracting negatively correlated. But yeah, this thing needs to do uh get a get a move on. Oh yeah. And um time to fly, you just DM me. Tell me when you want to uh start. Get some of your <clears throat> live streams taken care of. I'm ready. MJ, you got something to say? You there? He is not. Let's see. It's flashing. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you nailed it. It starts flashing. You're, you're waiting, right? At some point coming even if it's just little ones yeah back over here I mean, it's just in this opening four hour candle. It's in the 68.3. Um, kind of, you know, that's kind of a little backwards. It's like you, everything will flow uphill. So you can kind of predict what's going by by the low time frames rolling up into the higher time frames. But yes, I do. I'll start on like a when I when I start intraday trading, I start on the four hour and work it backwards. So in a sense, yes, but not not exactly. It's like I I see the four hour, the ninety minute, the forty five, and the fifteen is going to give me a good bias of probably with high probability of what price action is going to do for the day. Especially when, um, you know, you got the VRE. You can see, it. Is it a, do we have a tight daily range? Was it a tight weekly range? Where are we? I love having all the distribution levels on there. But yeah, that's how I usually will start it out. I mean, like day, anything above four hour, any chart I'm ever on, trust me, I'm I'm not trading any of that. <laughs> I just do. People like to talk. 
like to see the higher time frames. When I go into a day of trading, 4 hour and below, 4 hour 90, 45 and 15 gets me a good idea of what I'm doing on the 5 minutes all day long. At least like how I'm going to allocate my capital. Is it going to be a down day? Going to be a uh, an up day? We're just going to go sideways? And those are the great days. If I'm seeing something in, in the day where it's just like this thing, this baby's going sideways all day. I'm not. I'm. I'm doing so. I'm taking the day off. I'm not going to sit around for a couple of trades. If I see a tight price action volatility range, I'm on that. Right? You're ready. You're probably going to trend that day. And then you just by going down through those time frames, you figure out. Okay, so I already know we're going to trend. Which way? Let's do this. But yeah, guys, we're probably going to wrap it up. <clears throat> and the rest of the week should be earlier. Yeah, you're welcome. Should be the regular time, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Get back on that schedule. Yep, you're welcome, Takumi. Um, but yeah, tomorrow, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Probably the rest of the week. I've got some stuff to do, but those those times should be fine. You are welcome time to fly. And like I said, definitely get a hold of me. We'll we'll get one of your sessions out of the way. <laughs> Other than that, you guys, tomorrow, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I will see you guys. <laughs>